special Halloween episode of Traveling Clarinets. So today, instead of going back in time like we normally do, we're going to take a look at the curse of the clarinet. No, 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 you're saying it wrong. It's the curse of the clarinet. Wow, you're good. I know I am. I'm yeah. actually a witch. <laughs> um, do you have the button? Right here. Sweet. Patented Clarinet HQ transport button. Can I take this with me? Yeah, of course. It's Halloween. Okay, so I, I want some candy. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! Cemetery in Vienna, Austria, and we're at the gravesite of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Oh. Well, I mean, we, we think it's his gravesite. Uh, sorry. We think? Like, what do you mean we think? Because I can see right there it says W.A. Mozart, right? Yeah. Not some other Mozart. Well, it turns out that no one actually knows where Mozart is buried because he was buried in an unmarked grave. So when he died in 1791, he was. Uh, a normal person, so he got a normal unmarked grave. He wasn't part of the aristocracy. He wasn't a very powerful person, and uh, and so it was unmarked, and we don't really know where he was buried. Uh, that's a real bummer. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's definitely a bummer. And the other bummer is that during that time period, it was really common to, after like around ten years, to like dig up the body and scooch over the bones and then put another body in there. Interesting. So. So basically, this may or may not be where Mozart's buried. So how crazy would it be if, like, every year people come here to pay homage to Mozart, but it's actually, like, Bob, some yeah. random guy. Yeah, I bet it is an That's Austrian crazy. named Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, it's kind of fitting because, you know, like, we don't know what Mozart really wrote in his clarinet concerto because the manuscript is lost. So it's kind of fitting that Mozart himself is lost. Uh, by the way, if you don't know the story of Mozart's clarinet concerto and why it's lost, check out the episode we did on Mozart's BFS. BFF, it's a crazy coincidence. Well, do you think it's a coincidence or do you think it's part of the curse? Um, so anyway, Mozart's clarinet concerto premiered on October 16th, 1791, and he died less than two months later on December 5th. Ooh. Now, Mozart died at the age of 35, uh, which is scary because that's how old I am. Um, but experts will tell you that he died of some unknown illness, but we know the real culprit. It's the, the curse. curse. Um, now, I know you might not be convinced by only one case, but we're definitely not done. Uh, so let's head a few miles down the road to Vienna's Central Cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, because Mozart was not the only German composer to die by clarinet. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh wait, hey, there's a bus, let's catch it. Oh, hey. yeah. Hey. That park all moves. Oh, yeah, cemeteries creep me out. Yeah, they're, they're really pretty, but they're creepy. Hold on. Does that say Mozart? Is, is this where Mozart's buried? I thought we just saw his grave. We did. So he has he has a grave site in St. Mark's, and then he has a memorial here in Central Cemetery. And it's kind of confusing. Okay. But but we have like we have Beethoven and Schubert. Did they both die by clarinet? No, um, Schubert did. So he actually died even younger than Mozart did. He died when he was only 31. I... But I bet I know the, the piece that killed him. Was it The Shepherd on the Rock? Yeah. And that piece for uh, uh, soprano, clarinet, and piano? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, so Schubert wrote all sorts of music for different ensembles. He wrote string quartets, he wrote symphonies, he wrote chamber music. Um, but he's best known for his leader. Uh, leader is the German word for song. Mm. So Schubert wrote The Shepherd on the Rock for this famous soprano uh, with whom he shared a mutual admiration even though the two of them never actually met. Yeah, but she also didn't even get the music until a year after his death, because a month after he finished the composition, he... Alright, so, uh, I have to say, like, after seeing Mozart and Schubert as a person in his 30s who writes music for clarinet, 
uh, I'm getting a little concerned. Um, but it, that's the grave of Johannes Brahms over there. Yeah, it is. Didn't he die like right after uh, writing his clarinet sonatas? Um, he did. He died about three years after, so I'm not really sure if that counts. Maybe Brahms was like so powerful, he was able to fend off the curse for three whole years. Oh, like yeah. Um, but is it, so, are, is it like this curse was localized and only affected composers who lived in Vienna? Let's go to Paris, as ghosts. We can do that. We can do anything we want. Okay. Cool. Let's. Oh, Ooh, I'm a ghost. Ooh. You can see through me. It's cool. This is nice. Yeah, it's so much better than flying on an airplane. Yeah. Food is better too. Yeah. Okay. So I see from the signs that we're in Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, France. I'm so sorry for those of you who actually speak French out there. Uh, and we're at the grave of Francis Poulenc. Uh, don't tell me it was his clarinet sonata that killed him. I love that piece. So uh, Poulenc's sonata for clarinet and piano was one of the last works that he wrote. Um, he finished the piece in the summer of 1962, and then he died of a massive heart attack in January of 1963. They say it was a massive heart attack, but we know the real. But at least he made it to 64. Yeah. So that's like twice as old as Schubert was. Yeah. That's to count for something. That's true, yeah. I mean, now if I remember correctly, there are some good times. So, like Schubert, Poulenc died before his work was performed or even published. They published it posthumously, which, which means after he died. Uh, the Poulenc sonata was commissioned by Benny Goodman. Uh, and I don't know if you remember. We did a Traveling Clarinets episode mm -hmm. on Benny Goodman, so you guys should check that out. Uh, and Goodman didn't premiere the sonata until months after Poulenc's death, just like The Shepherd on the Rock. Yeah, that's right. All right, so I, like, I, at the beginning of this, I was just sort of playing along, you know, Curse of the Clarinet. I didn't really believe it. I'm starting to believe it. Like, I am, like, really convinced, and I hope you are, too. Yeah, and that's not all of them. Uh, there are more. Four miles away at a different ce uh, cemetery in Paris is the grave of Camille Sasson, who died not long after writing his own clarinet sonata in 1921. Piece. I know. Oh. Yeah, okay, so that's really, like, I'm getting creeped out now. Mm -hmm. Can we go home? No, no, we have one more. Oh. Let's go. Okay, do I'll, we have to? I'll get you some candy. Ooh, candy corn? No. It's definitely colder here. Yeah, that's because we're further north in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. So this mm. is the resting place of Carl Nielsen. So you might know him from his clarinet concerto, which is known for being really difficult. Yeah, I've, I've heard that that piece is a killer. Pun. Did I just make a pun? Is that piece actually a killer? Uh, you did, and it is. So Nielsen became friends with a wind quintet called the Copenhagen Wind Quintet creative name. Um, he decided he wanted to write a concerto for each of the instruments. So in 1922, he wrote a flute concerto. In 1928, he wrote the clarinet concerto. And then, and then in 1931, he died from a series of heart attacks. So uh, sorry, oboe bassoon and horn. No concertos for you. It's fine. No one wants to listen to them anyway. Burn. <laughs> so that's the curse of the clarinet. Um, Yes, let's head home. Whoa! Well, uh, it's creepy, but thanks for showing me the curse of the clarinet. I, I had no idea, and I didn't really hey, you're believe welcome. it. You're welcome. I'm just bummed I didn't get any Halloween candy.
Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of Traveling Clarinets. Uh, um, subscribe and follow Clarinet HQ for all of our latest content. And uh, Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs>